In this video, we will discuss how to solve more complicated equilibrium problems, specifically ones that need to use an, uh, a rice table, sometimes called an ice box. So I'm going to walk through the steps, and then we're just going to dive right into some practice problems. And I've chosen three different practice problems, all of which have something slightly different, but they're all solved the same way. So the first thing, you, you need to have your uh, reaction written, and that's what the R of rice stands for. And then you're going to um, read what the problem says and try to plug in things to your rice table. The I of rice stands for initial concentration, and it's important that that's just whatever they give you, you know, that you start out with a certain amount and it can only be molarities, which that's what you'll see maybe 90% of the time, or atmosphere. So those are the only things that can be plugged into a rice table. So if you are, you're given moles, you can't plug in moles to your rice table. You have to then divide it by the liters to get molarity, and then you're able to plug it in to your rice table. The C stands for the change, so in terms of is it increasing or decreasing? And typically, we will represent that in terms of X. And then E stands for what's actually left at equilibrium. Okay, and then we'll set up the algebra, we'll solve for X, and then just we'll make sure that we answer the question that is being asked. So I'm gonna look at number two here, and we've got a reaction, so I know that that is R. I'm going to go ahead and write rice, and then I'm going to read through it. And it says that we are given 0.298 moles of uh, PCl3, 8.70 times 10 to the negative third moles of PCl5. And then after we reach equilibrium, so that's down here, once we reach equilibrium, we have 2 times 10 to the negative third moles of chlorine. These are all moles. And so we cannot plug that into this rice table. However, we only have one liter of solution or of uh, our container. And so I can actually divide the moles by liters or divide by one to get molarity. So our moles are actually molarity here. And I'm going to plug in my initial. I am given 8.70 times 10 to the negative. 3 moles of PCl5 divided by 1 liter will be 8.7 times 10 to the negative third molarity of that. I'm given 0.298 molarity of PCl3. And they don't mention anything about Cl2 to begin with, and so I think it's reasonable to call that zero molarity. Now, um, We've got to figure out which way this reaction shifts to reach equilibrium. And on a problem like this, I know exactly which way it shifts because I have zero Cl2. And so at equilibrium, I will have some of PCl5, some of PCl3, and some of Cl2. And since I began with zero for, P for Cl2, I must shift right to form some Cl2. Okay, so when I shift right, this PCl5 will be subtracting, this PCl3 will be adding, because that's now on the product side, because there's the arrow, and I'll be adding some Cl2. I don't know how much I will be adding, but I let's just call... Uh, my PCL5, I'll be subtracting X. The coefficient for PCL3 is the same as PCL5, so I know that that'll be the same ratio. So X and CL2 has the same coefficient, so that is X. And then I can think of um, this as adding up the initial and the change. So this is 8.70 times 10 to the minus third minus x, 0 0.298 plus x, this is just x. I know, and I should always write a k expression, I know that my k expression is just from the balanced equation, so I know it'll be Cl2 
to the first power, PCl3 to the first power, divided by my reactants, which is PCl5 to the first power as well. And to solve for K, I just need to plug in that value, that value, and that value. And those will be these values. However, I have an unknown X there. But if you remember from the beginning, they have told us that at equilibrium, we know how much Cl2 there is. So this X is really 2.00 times 10 to the minus third. And I'm going to plug in this to that X and to that X. And to keep this video short, I have done that. And this is 6.7 times 10 to the minus third after I've plugged in X. And this one is 0 0.30. These are molarities. So now that I know the equilibrium values, whatever this equilibrium row is, I can plug those in. So Cl2 is 2.00 times 10 to the minus third. PCL3 is 0 0.30. And I'm going to divide it by PCL5, which is 6.7 times 10 to the minus third. And those are the equilibrium concentrations. So that's part of the question that I've solved for. That's that, that, and that. And I just plug this into my calculator. And whenever you're solving something with these fractions, I would go a little bit slower than maybe what you want to just to make sure you get it right. I have seen a lot of students have all the right work, but they just goof up on this last calculation. And I get K to be 8.96 times 10 to the minus 2, or we can say 0 0.0896, and that would be reactant favored. Okay. Let's move on to another example, and we'll look at number three. In number three, I'm given not a reaction, so I have to come up with it, and I'm given that HF is formed from hydrogen and fluorine gases, and everything is gases here. So hydrogen reacts with fluorine, both diatomic, of course, to produce... HF gas, and then to balance it, I'll put a two in front of HF. They give me the temperature at 561 Kelvin. The only reason they do that is because the whatever equilibrium constant here, the 115, that 115 value is only true at 561 Kelvin. Okay, we are given three moles of all the chemicals, and the volume is 1.5 liters, and we need to calculate the equilibrium concentration of all the different chemicals. So, if you remember, I cannot plug in moles to a rice table. What I can plug in, though, is molarities. If I take three and I divide it by 1.5, I will get two, so the molarities of everything is two to begin with. And I need to figure out for my change, which way does the reaction shift? And that is not always an easy thing. So what I need to do is I've got values of everything, but I'm not at equilibrium just yet. So when I'm not at equilibrium, I need to use Q. And Q is solved for using the same way we solve for K. And that is just products divided by reactants. And so I'm going to solve for Q. The molarity of everything is 2. And when I do this, hopefully your mental math can do this. But if not, no big deal. Just plug it into your calculator. And I get 1 for my Q. So whenever we're dealing with Q, I would go ahead and make a number line. And what I know is that K, we'll say, is in the middle. 
and k is given at 115. q is over here at 1, and so all reactions eventually reach k or the equilibrium. And so I know that my reaction shifts right in order to do that. So what that means is that this is minus, this is minus, and this is plus. This is minus 1x or just minus x. This is minus x, and this is plus x, but it's got to be 2x since the coefficient of HF is 2. I'll add up each column, so 2 minus x, 2 minus x, 2 plus 2x. And I'll go ahead and I'm going to copy this just to make my life a little bit easier. And I'm going to write my K expression. And K is solved for the exact same way as Q. And this is going to end up being HF, which is 2 plus 2X squared. And then H2 is 2 minus X. F2 is 2 minus X. So what I can do is I can simplify that, and I can just call that 2 minus x squared, and that will equal k, which is 115. What I want to solve for is the equilibrium constant of everything, or not the equilibrium constant, but the equilibrium concentration of everything. And I already have that here. That's this last column. The only reason why the problem isn't done is that I need to solve for x. So all I need to do from this math equation is solve for x. And I have a quadratic. I don't want to do the quadratic formula. And so what I'll do is I will just look at this. And I'll notice that I have squares for both of those. So what I can do is I can take the square root of each side to get rid of those squares. And when I do that, I get 2 plus 2x divided by 2 minus x. My calculator tells me that the square root of 115 is 10.72. And so now I can multiply each side by 2 minus x. That cancels 2 minus x. And I'm left with 21.44 minus 10.72x equals 2 minus or 2 plus 2x. I can combine like terms and I get 12.72 equals 19.44, 12.72x, I should say. X ends up equaling. 1.53. Now this problem is almost done. I would like you to pause this video and all you need to do is plug in X up here to where you see X. So pause this video and I'm going to go ahead and write the answer here. Okay, there we go. Our last problem is going to be the last one for this set of notes, and it's going to be number 10. And this one is more like the problems that you will see um, commonly. So this is the most common type of equilibrium problem. I'm given my reaction. And my reaction is CH4. That's a gas plus I2 gas, and that will form CH3I plus HI, and that um, is actually already balanced, so that's convenient. And the first part of this question that I think is good to answer is it says, is KP equal to KC? So we've talked about in previous notes that KP and KC are sometimes equal, but one thing has to be true. And what has to be true 
is that the number of gas moles on each side of the reaction have to be the same for Kp to equal Kc. And so I have two gas moles on the left side, and that actually equals the two gas moles on the right side. So if I answered this question on a test, the answer would be yes. For this reaction, Kp is equal to Kc. And the reason why is that we have the same number of gas moles, specifically gas moles, on each side of the reaction. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to fill out my rice chart. I'm going to finish reading this. We are at 630 Kelvin. That temperature we will not plug in. That's just the only time that Kp will be true. And Kp is 2.26 times 10 to the minus 4. And that is reactant favored. We start out with an initial pressure of methane, which is CH4. And that is 105.1 torr. Remember, we can plug in pressure and molarity to our Ks. And then I2 is 7.96 torr. And we are asked to determine the pressures of everything at equilibrium. So that's asking what is everything down here. So because CH3I was not mentioned and HI was not mentioned, we can assume that they're zero. Thus, the reaction has to shift right because at equilibrium, I will have sum of everything. So this will be minus, this will be minus, this will be plus, this will be plus. All the coefficients are one, so it's minus X and minus X and then plus X and plus X. I can add up each column, and so I get 105.1 minus x, 7.96 minus x, x, and x. And I can write a Kp expression. Kp is going to be a little bit different because it's going to be the pressure of CH3I to the first power times the pressure of HI divided by the pressure of CH4 times the pressure of I2. And even though Kp and Kc are equal to each other right now, I need to make it with my work partial pressure because I'm actually going to be plugging in some pressures and solving for some pressures because it says determine pressure. So I just want to be very consistent. So I'm going to plug in what I know. And here's what I know is I know um, this is going to be x, this is going to be x divided by 105.1 minus x, and 7.96 minus x. That's going to be equal to, let me simplify it a little bit first, x squared divided by what I just wrote. And then the equilibrium constant here is 2.26 times 10 to the minus 4. And this math is extremely annoying, and you would have to use the quadratic equation to do this. If you have a TI inspire and you are familiar with the solve for x feature, feel free to solve for x. And when you do the quadratic equation, which I'm not going to do here, chances are you will get a positive x value and a negative x value. And hopefully you understand that if I plugged in a negative value for X, that would actually increase my pressure for CH4 and I2, even though we already said the reaction is shifting right and it would decrease. So you would just ignore the negative value for X. What we can do is we can make our life a little bit simpler. And what we can say is that this reaction, even though I'm saying that it's shifting right, because it will, it's not going to form that much products or that many products in terms of their value. And so X is going to be a very, very small number compared to what we started with. So even though I can get the exact value of X using the quadratic formula, these minus X's... I'll highlight them in red here, are not really going to be significant. It's sort of like if Bill Gates goes to Subway and gets a $5 foot long, 
even though he spent five dollars that five dollars isn't really having any effect on his ability to buy things in the future or his net worth and the same thing is true here this minus x they're not really going to be a big enough number so even if i subtract this x from this guy from 7.96 i might still end up with 7.5 or something that it's not that much of a difference okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get rid of the minus x I'm just going to ignore it, and on this video, this is called the 5% rule. And you can do this on any problems because AP is only going to throw you problems where you can do this. And so the rule for the 5% rule is that you can only get rid of minus x's and plus x's, so adding and subtracting. This x up here is just x squared, so I can't get rid of that because it's not adding or subtracting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase these to make my math a little bit simpler. And so what this simplifies to is x squared divided by, if I multiply 105.1 times 7.96, I get 836.596 equals 2.26 times 10 to the minus 4. I'm going to multiply over 836. I'm going to end up with x squared is equal to 0 0.1891. Take the square root. x is equal to 0 0.435. I'm now going to take that value and I need you to pause this video and plug it in for your x. And what we end up with is 104.665 tor, 7.525 tor. Then these two guys are going to be the same, 0 0.435 tor, 0 0.435 tor. I'm just going to double check that I answered all the questions. We answered this one first, and we just answered that one, so we're good.